In this video, we're talking about the 10 most common, 50% true, 50% false, 100% misleading carnivore advice I hear on the internet that I would not follow. And the truth shall set you free. To start with my least favorite statement I hear in the carnivore space is, you don't need to exercise to lose weight. Yeah. I don't know why people say this because by saying you don't need to exercise to lose weight, essentially you're promoting not exercising. Otherwise you wouldn't say the statement because it shouldn't matter whether or not someone can lose weight without exercise. Exercise is great for the brain, the heart, digestion, it can help improve our mood, help our sleep, it can help build our metabolism, balance our hormones, keep us strong, lower stress. And if someone is trying to lose weight, exercising can speed that up. So holy cow, the list of benefits to exercise are just nonstop. But yes, if someone is eating a carnivore diet, you don't have to exercise to lose weight but you also don't have to eat a carnivore diet to lose weight. The reason people eat a healthy diet is in hopes that it will help them live a longer, more enjoyable, pain-free life. So diet is like peanut butter and exercise is like jelly. And if we mash those two together, mm, we don't have to all pick the same jelly. Maybe you like grape or raspberry or strawberry. So maybe you like tennis or walking swimming, weightlifting, any kind of jelly works, but you mix it with the peanut butter and your sandwich game just went to a whole nother level. Why are we promoting eating a healthy diet but not exercising? I don't know. The body was not meant to sit all day. There's 24 hours in a day. Let's give it some movement, which will also help with weight loss. Next kind of true, kind of misleading statement I hear is fat won't make you fat. Okay, but carbs don't make people fat. Protein doesn't make people fat. Alcohol doesn't make people fat. Donuts don't make people fat. But if you eat enough of anything, you may see some extra adipose tissue. I understand why carnivore influencers say fat won't make you fat because so many people over the years have been conditioned to believe that fat makes you fat. However, by saying like the more fat, the merrier, eat it on up, it's just, that's not how it works. My fiance Bryce ate a carnivore diet and gained fat around his waist. I have been doing a strict carnivore experiment for the last 60 days and I'm eating less fat than what other people would recommend I eat and I'm still gaining. I can see just my body composition is changing. Which leads to my next favorite phrase, eat until you're comfortably full. Now, as someone who creates content for the masses, I understand it can be challenging to make videos and wanting to be helpful, but at the same time, unless I can speak to someone one-on-one -on -one and know what are you eating, how much are you eating, when are you eating, what was your past eating history, we kind of just say these broad or generic statements to be as helpful as we can be, but there's always a but. Isn't there always a but? When someone first hears this and starts implementing it, there are three outcomes that can happen. Someone's either going to undereat, overeat, or they're going to be a magical unicorn and know exactly how much to eat to hit their goals. When I first started eating an animal-based diet, my metabolism was so shot back then where I only wanted to eat about 1200 calories in a day. I didn't track my calories. I just listened to my body and ate until I was comfortably full which just so happened to be this small amount of food. And if I would have continued to significantly under eat, it would have, it could have destroyed my metabolism, impacted my strength, my mood, my energy, my hormones, my thyroid, my endurance, my sleep, the growth of my hair, my menstrual cycle, 
a lot. On the flip side, I work with clients who will tell me that they listened to the eat until comfortably full advice and they were hungry. And so they ate and they ate and they kept listening to their body for over a year. They kept doing that and they gained 20 pounds where eventually they're like, okay, we need to do something different. While I do think the eat until comfortably full advice is good, it's just very broad that no one really knows what that means. Does comfortably full mean I basically just left a buffet and I am so stuffed and I'm my buttons are popping off on my pants? Does comfortably full mean I can work out right after I finish eating? Does comfortably full mean I can only have room for one more bite? What does comfortably full really mean? I just find a lot of people who under eat and it just their metabolism, their energy, their everything. I'm just like, okay, maybe we should not listen to when we're comfortably full because I did that and it made me significantly under eat. Which next thing is do a priming protocol, which basically means stuff yourself for a couple of days until you want to throw up and then starve yourself until you are so flippin' hungry. Not my go to approach for weight loss. I know some people have really great results doing this. Awesome. But one of the biggest reasons why people may not see continual weight loss results or why they may regain weight is because they can't adhere to the diet forever. Because if we want to keep the weight loss off forever, we have to do a diet that we can sustain and that we can stick to. For me, I personally, I mean, of course, if people want to do protein sparing, modified fasting, a vegan diet, a pizza diet, all the different ways that people can lose weight kind of diets, by all means, awesome. I am rooting for people from afar. But for me, I don't like feeling uncomfortably full. I don't like feeling uncomfortably hungry. I know there's other ways to lose weight and I want to do something that's just more enjoyable and therefore sustainable for me. Another half truth, half false kind of misleading statement is you can get all of the vitamins and minerals you need from just eating steak or just eating muscle meat. Okay, sure. I would get all of the vitamins and minerals I need. This much of certain vitamins and minerals I need. If I ate two pounds of cooked steak, we're talking ribeyes, vitamin A is pretty low, vitamin C, don't get me started about vitamin D, vitamin E is really low, vitamin K, low in folate, very little calcium, half our magnesium, a third of our manganese, this is two pounds cooked. If it was raw, it's probably 2.5 pounds raw. And then once we cook it, we're talking two pounds cooked ribeye steak. I would definitely be deficient in certain vitamins and minerals. And there's an imbalance of certain vitamins and minerals. There's an overload of iron, not very much copper that kind of balances that out. So if I was only eating muscle meat, then if I was a male or a female who no longer has a menstrual cycle, I would be considering donating blood to help reduce some of that iron or I would eat some copper. If I were to eat 10 pounds of cooked ribeye a day, which is 15,000 calories, I would still be low and deficient in certain vitamins and minerals. And now the imbalance of nutrients is even greater. With that being said, you don't need to eat organ meats on a carnivore diet. I think it's possible if someone is having eggs, dairy, fish, seafood, bones, blood, there are ways to get the same vitamins and minerals from different foods. Or I could just have some liver. If we look at liver, it's going to help a lot with folate, vitamin A, copper. That will help balance out all of the iron from muscle meat. Liver is a superfood. So if someone doesn't like the taste, yes, then I would be very particular to make sure I'm getting in other foods that have the same nutrients or I would just take the desiccated capsules. Future Lily is here. I filmed this video about a week 
prior to the liver king drama and i just want to say that i've been eating liver prior to me ever being on social media prior to liver king being on social media i have liver in my diet not because i think it's going to turn me into the liver king and have a six pack and all of this i have it because liver is a very nutrient dense and healthy food i was just listening to chris kesser the other day on a podcast talking about how americans nowadays are so nutrient deprived and he listed off the percentage of americans who are deficient in certain nutrients I'm not going to go through the whole list, but I'll, I'll give you the, t the, the top few because it's so shocking. 100% don't get enough potassium. 94% don't get enough vitamin D. 92% don't have enough choline. 89% don't get enough vitamin E. 67% vitamin K. And magnesium, over 90% of Americans not getting enough. So we're talking about the majority of the population in the richest country in the world being deficient in not just one, but several essential micronutrients. I believe later he goes on to say that our grandparents, when they were kids, if they ate an orange, it had eight times more nutrition in it than it does today. So I would have to eat eight oranges to equate to the one orange my grandma had to eat. So our soil, water, food supply are pretty nutrient deprived, which is why I go out of my way to eat a very nutrient dense diet and I do eat actual liver meat because if I eat liver and it tastes really sweet and good, I take that as a signal from my body that I probably need some more of that nutrition. Whereas if I continually have liver, then it starts to taste like iron or kind of metallic-y. I take that as a signal that, okay, I got enough of that. So when I take the desiccated capsules, I don't get that same feedback, but when I'm traveling or when my farmer ran out of liver, for people who don't like the taste of organ meats, I do use the One Earth Health brand for desiccated organs, just because for me, yes, I don't think people have to eat liver to be healthy, but I do know that it's packed with nutrition, and so I just wanna cover my bases. Okay, back to the video. And so as far as you don't need to take any supplements on a carnivore diet. Listen, Linda, I think out of all of the diets that exist in the world, someone has the best chance not needing to supplement if they're eating a particular carnivore diet. Again, that's going to be one with eggs, organs, seafood, dairy, and this person lives in a place where they get outside for 15 minutes every day and have access to that vitamin D synthesis. And even then I would still consider either a foot soak or a transdermal magnesium. If someone is anti-ingesting nutrients, then they may be able to get by. But I'm not going to risk being deficient in vitamins and minerals. For people who live above the 37th parallel, that includes me. From the months October through April, there's too little UVB rays for vitamin D synthesis. So even if it's 75 degrees and sunny outside, if I live above the 37th parallel, I'm not going to be getting any vitamin D synthesis from the sun during those months. I would love to get all of the vitamin D I need from food, but let's talk about it. The foods highest in vitamin D are pasture-raised, sun-exposed eggs. Because again, if the chickens are, if you're eating eggs from a chicken that came from a place above the 37th parallel during those months, that chicken had less vitamin D synthesis, that egg yolk is going to have less vitamin D. So one conventional, non-pasture-raised, non-sun-exposed egg in the grocery store is going to have about 40 IUs of vitamin D, whereas a pasture-raised sun-exposed egg will have about five times as much. It'll be about 200 to 250 IUs of vitamin D. The other highest foods in vitamin D are salmon, sardines, and cod liver oil. Now, if I were to eat salmon and sardines every day, which I would be more concerned about mercury overload at that point, but if I were to do that, I still wouldn't be getting all of the vitamin D I need. Cod liver oil is just really expensive. If to find a real quality, actual cod liver oil that doesn't have any toxins, it's much more expensive than just buying some vitamin D. Now magnesium. Humans used to shower and bathe in the ocean filled with magnesium. They used to take stream baths and bathe themselves and soak in magnesium. 
our water supply, our soil, our foods used to have more magnesium in them. But magnesium doesn't come out of my shower head. My drinking water has no magnesium in it. Meat is not high in magnesium. So I personally supplement with vitamin D during the winter months, and then year round I take Element Electrolytes, which is a drink mix that has magnesium. Frankly, one packet is not enough magnesium for me, so sometimes I'll take two a day, and then of course I do get some magnesium in my food, so I use the Element packets to just top it off. For the strict carnivores, they do have a raw unflavored package, which is just three ingredients, sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Otherwise, they have some dangerously delicious flavors, which they just launched the holiday chocolate medley that has chocolate salt, chocolate caramel, and mint chip. Oh my, are you kidding me? Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. The sample pack comes with eight single serving packets, including the raw unflavored packet. And you can claim this free sample pack with any order by going to the link in the video description or by going to the URL D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Lily Kane. I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but... Bacon is a health-promoting food. Ah. All right, all right, everybody, calm down. All right, all right. I love bacon. I eat bacon many times a week. But as far as the bacon most people are going to be buying in the grocery stores, it's not organic. It's not pasture-raised. It's likely going to have sugar in it. I'm not going to say bacon as a whole is a health food, but it is a mental health food. Yes, bacon has nutrients in it, and bacon is healthier than eating pizzas, chips, and, and brownies. So if someone is eating a processed junk food diet, and instead of drinking soda, they start eating bacon, awesome, eat the bacon. But standard bacon in the grocery stores are just going to be filled with a lot of toxins, the wrong kinds of fats, really high in PUFA. Pigs are just not very clean animals. They are fed a lot of corn, soy, grains, a lot of funkies. Unlike a cow that has that four stomach chamber where it can kind of filter out some of these things, a pig does not. So I don't think that eating bacon is healthier than eating eggs, liver, salmon, sardines, fruits, vegetables, but bacon can be healthy and good depending on the person and depending on the bacon. On the other hand, I've heard people say, if you aren't seeing results on a carnivore diet, you should avoid or limit dairy. Now granted, what kind of results are we trying to reach? And what kind of dairy are we talking about? If it's conventional pasteurized dairy, I eat that for the purpose of mouth pleasure, not because I'm trying to get a lot of vitamins and minerals from that. Whereas with raw A2 grass finished dairy, I mean, holy moly, that is packed with essential vitamins and minerals, and it can be really great for the gut and for healing. I know Rob Stewart talks about healing eczema, acne, dermatitis, psoriasis with raw dairy. Again, it depends on people's goals. If someone's goal is weight loss, people can lose weight eating chips and soda. So it's not that dairy would be prohibiting weight loss unless someone overeats dairy. Dairy does have an addictive component to it. So if someone finds that they can't just have a little bit of cheese on their burger, it turns into a lot of bit of cheese, then I would avoid it. So when I hear people say that you should eliminate dairy to get faster or better results, I'm like, what kind of results are we talking about and what kind of dairy? Lastly, I guess I don't really hear carnivore influencers say this, but I hear other people say, is it true that if you eat a carnivore diet, your metabolism goes down? No, eating a carnivore diet will not slow down someone's metabolism unless they're significantly under eating 
or they're not exercising, then it could impact metabolism. But I'm going to make a full video on how to build your metabolism here soon. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe. And if you're looking to ask more questions, work with someone one-on-one -on, -one on how you can reach your goals faster, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's a link to that in the description. I hope you guys have a happy rest of your day. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.